In this video, we'll explore some ways you can use Lumenzio version 10 to edit your images. But before we get to the actual edit, I want to quickly address some questions I've heard around the interface. Specifically, some of you have asked what happened to the other buttons in the panel? If you are used to a more complete interface that looks like this, this is the old large full size of the panel, which was the default for everything up through Lumenzio version 9. But starting with Lumenzio version 8, there's actually been a compact mode and this version of the panel has been around for a couple of years now. You'll actually see it in most of my tutorials. It just wasn't the default, and now it's your starting place. However, you can easily toggle between these as I have by Command or Control clicking the X button, or go up to the flyout in the panel, go to Interface Sizes and Modes, and here you can choose from the different size options. So large is the old default, large compact is the new default, and then beneath are some even smaller options. Also note on the right are some different options for the modes you can cycle through. So when you click on this button here, you'd click from preview to live M, live S, blend if, and so on. The blend of this has been turned off as an option because it's seldom used. But if you do use it, you can check it here and that'll just become a new option as you click through the different modes up here. But I don't personally use it, so I'm gonna leave it unchecked. So let's take a look at why you would wanna work with a compact interface. Why is that now the default instead of the full interface? Well, if you're looking at the full interface and you want something like Lights 3, you just click on that button, you get a preview of Lights 3 in the image. You could go to click to Lights 4 to get a different value. However, you could also use the slider. I could click on 3 here and I get a Lights 3 preview, just like as if I'd clicked on that button. I never have to click on L2. If I click on 2 on the slider, I get the same thing. And so the slider has always allowed us to move between these different values or even go off the end of the scale because you can go all the way down to light seven, which there is no button for that, or to intermediate values such as lights 2.5. There's no button between two and three, but with the slider, we can go to different values in between here. So the slider has always been a really helpful thing. And because you can get to essentially any value in the panel, we can instead use this compact interface to make for a simpler, smaller panel and just go click on L and then slide down to whatever value we may want, like lights three and a half. Now, another question I've heard from some of you is, well, what about the zones here? We've got the letter zones, for example, something like zone D, which is a brighter mid-tone, wider zone and kind of a five zone system. But what if you wanted something more targeted like the old numeric zones, which would look like zero through 10? Well, if I wanna to get to something that's more targeted, I can just slide down and now it's a little bit more precise. And if I wanna go in between values like brighter than D and darker than E, well, I can just slide to the right and now I'm targeting brighter tones in the image. So if you wanna to go to different values here that you don't see these numbers for, just slide down and then move left and right to target whatever specific zone you want. So let's take a look at that with a quick example. Let's say I wanna go target this band of the Aurora and instead of using the zone picker, I'm just gonna guess something like zone C. And that's okay, but it's, it's really targeting things that are a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go and slide to the right for brighter things. See, it's getting closer. I'm gonna keep sliding to the right and keep sliding even further. Now I'm kind of hitting that sweet spot. If it's not bright enough, I can start with zone D to get a closer starting point. And then from there, I can go a little bit brighter. And you see, that's really more the sweet spot I was looking for. And if I wanna have a narrower range of tones, maybe I wanna eliminate some of these edge tones then I could go slide down and get more targeted. And you can see here, it looks like I wasn't quite dead on with that center tone. So let's try something even brighter. And now I'm back on there. So you can play with this. I would say as a general rule, if you're trying to use the sliders to find your zone, go slide down to something really precise. Then you can move around until you find the exact tone that nails what you need and then slide up here to go as broad as you want to be for the surrounding tones. Let's close that. Last thing I want to quickly note is if you're working with something like the Live M, Live Mask, or Live Selection Mode, you really do want to be in the full panel interface because there are no sliders for the live modes. Also, if you work with something like the dark midtones or the light midtones, there is no way to get to those via sliders, so you'd also want the full interface. But now you know the differences and how to get to them. I'm going to revert back to the compact interface because I find that this is what I use nearly all the time myself. It's just simpler and easier and frees up more room for things I wanna see on the screen like layers. So to edit this image, I'm thinking I wanna do a couple things. I wanna make this Aurora a little bit more punchy, a little brighter, call attention to it, and these foreground buildings maybe a little bit darker. So let's start with these buildings. If I wanna take the face of this and make it a bit darker, 
What I want to do is find a mask that will target the bright things, and then I'll darken that. So let's go click on L for a preview of things which are lighter in the image. And let's just slide that down. Maybe try something like lights. Three and a half seems to nicely isolate the front of these buildings. It does include the Aurora, which I don't want to include in my mask, but I'll just use a group mask to remove that. So let's go and click for a brightness contrast layer, which converts that preview into a mask on a brightness contrast layer. We can see I've got the exact same mask here. And I'm just going to double click on this and bring down the brightness, which is helping me reduce the brightness of this building, maybe something like minus 50 or so. And you see from before and after how it's just slightly toning down this building. It's also hitting this Aurora. So I need to knock that out. And I can easily do that by just putting a group mask on this and revealing the change where I want it. So I'm going to go Alt click on group. So I get a black layer mask on the group. So now everything in the group is hidden, meaning none of those changes are having any effects just yet until I paint white on this layer mask to reveal it. So I'm going to hit B for my brush and then just brushing over the buildings. That's going to reveal the darkening effect over these buildings without revealing what it was doing over the Aurora. So with that, we just have a quick little adjustment here to make that building a little bit darker. It's pretty subtle. You got to look closely to see that difference, but I think it nicely improves the image. Next up, let's go work on the Aurora. And knowing that I'm selecting both buildings and the Aurora, I'm going to go do something I don't do in a lot of my tutorials, but I know some of you really love, which is to turn on these optional layers here for painting or dodging on the previews. If I say dodge, then I can take gray tones in the preview and make it darker or lighter. If I say paint, I can just paint directly on it. So let's go choose paint. And now when I create a preview, I'm going to have an extra layer that I can manipulate my preview. I'm going to click on L. And I'm looking for something to help target these auroras here. Maybe something down like a lights 2.5. That's nicely going to get the brightest part of the aurora. And I just don't want this stuff down below. So I need to remove it. And the last time I worked with an extra mask to control what was visible. This time I'm actually going to just change the mask directly by working with my paint layer. I'm going to hit B for my brush. I've got black as my foreground paint already. And now when I paint here, I'm just painting directly on this mask. So this is sort of like a destructive change, but it's on its own layer. You can see it's right here. So I could turn it off or I could go make changes. If I didn't like what I was doing there, I could hit E for the eraser and then I can erase and show those areas again. But that was fine. So I'm going to paint that back out. And all I'm doing is just removing it from this mask so that I start off with a simpler mask because there's so much separation between the roar and the buildings. I don't need something fancy like a group mask. This is a very easy edit to do. I'm not even using my Wacom pen here. I'm just doing this freehand with a mouse because I don't have my Wacom tablet handy. And it's just that easy to make the changes. So now I just get a better looking mask to begin. And let's load that once again on a brightness contrast layer. But this time, instead of darkening down things like the buildings, we're going to brighten things like the Aurora. So let's go double click this and bring up the brightness to something like 50 or 60. And there you see that it has nicely enhanced the Aurora. So I like this overall effect. And we can take a look from before to after. It's already started to make some nice improvements to the image, but I'd like to add even a little bit more contrast. And what I'm thinking is this could be a good application for some special layers and blend modes. If you go up to the top of the panel of the flyout, once again, go to this create special channels and layers. And this has been around for a little while, but it's not something I've demonstrated before. What you can do is create any of these special channels by checking them. If I want to create a magenta channel from CMYK, I can turn that on. Maybe the lightness channel from lab, whatever things I want, and then click the buttons below to create the output that I desire, such as a channel or layers or an interactive preview, which is what I'm going to do. And I think in this case, what I want to work with is saturation. I don't know if I need HSB or HSL. They're two different models of color saturation. But one of those I think will help nicely target the sky. And so I'm going to work with those two. And now I'm going to hit preview layers and selection. And so what this is going to do is give me this interface that shows me the options I just created. So I've got my HSB saturation and my HSL saturation as two different layers in the document. And I can then convert them into a selection. I can keep the current one that's active. That's the selected one here or I could even keep all of the layers by clicking on this option here. I also have some options up above to play with what I'm looking at. So let's say this is what we're previewing, but if I want to see the next one, I can go preview the next layer down. So now this is active and we're seeing that would be the targeting on this layer. 
I can also play with the blend mode, and this is what I was really going for. I want to use this in combination with a blend mode for special effects. If I go click on a different blend mode than normal, I'm not looking at this layer. I'm looking at in luminosity blend mode, or I can click to difference blend mode and so on. And I'm thinking something like soft light blend mode with a layer like this could have a really nice effect. Let's take a look if we turn the preview off and on, you see how nicely that's enhancing the Aurora. I'm not thinking I want to go full strength here, but directionally it's giving me a nicer looking sky. And I think that's something I'd like to do with my image. Now let's compare the two versions here by clicking on the other layer. So we can see here's the HSB version of saturation versus the HSL. And I can determine, do I want something that's kind of soft and subtle? Do I want something that's a little more aggressive? I think this is the direction I'd like to go. So HSL saturation is my preference here in the soft light blend mode. And to keep this, all I have to do is click on keep current preview layer. What it's going to do is keep this one with the desired soft light blend mode and discard the unused version. So click to keep this. We've got that now, and you can see there's our quick adjustment. Let's just simply take our opacity down until it looks pretty good. Note that some blend modes, and soft light's not one of them, some blend modes respond differently to fill than they do to opacity. So I would certainly encourage you to play with fill instead of opacity. Sometimes you can get a different result that might be more attractive depending on which blend mode you're working with, such as something like uh, Color Dodge, I think is one of those that is responsive to fill in a unique way. So here you can see this adjustment we've made to the Aurora. It looks really nice. I'm not sure I want so much of it in the foreground. So let's blend this in more carefully. I'm going to click on mask to give it a white mask, meaning that it's revealed everywhere. And now I'm going to hit B for my brush, X to make black my foreground paint, and just quickly brush over the foreground to reveal some of that previous foreground. So I'm not making that so dark. And I think that looks a lot nicer there to just help really bring out a lovely looking Aurora in this scene. And just looking overall here, we've gone from before to after with a much more interesting looking Aurora with just a couple of quick steps using our previews and sliders and our special blend modes off the top here. Lastly, just a couple of quick things to point out with the panel. We have some new interface options. If you look at basics, you'll see information about the document below the panel. You can also get this in the main panel or turn it off here by simply going up to the flyout and then choose the tool tips and info. It's this document and PS info. This is what's going to turn on this extra information. So I could turn it off here and it's hidden. I can go into Lumenzia and turn it on here by going back to that same flyout for the tool tips and enable it. And what we're seeing is the color space of the document and the bit depth. And what's nice about this is it'll help warn if there's any sort of a low quality setting being used. For example, if I was working on an image that was only in eight bits per channel, then the panel is going to warn me with this yellow highlight that you've got a lower quality mode. If this was an image that was being output as a JPEG, then you would expect to see that. But for general layered images, you wouldn't want that. And that's why that's being called out. Same thing if you had converted this image to something like sRGB, we could go and convert the uh, profile of this over to sRGB. And it's going to warn us that we've got a low gamut mode. So this yellow is just meant to highlight some areas where it may not be what you want. And just make sure you've made the panel tall enough to see that if you're turning on those options. I'm going to go step back my history a couple stops here. So we're back to our higher quality and we can see that we've got that information. And then lastly, in the panel flyout down below, we have things like the user manuals which if we click this, it's going to show us the user manual for the panel. So you have a quick reference. You no longer have to go back to the zip file to get this information. It's built into the panel for your use at any time, as well as options here to check for the latest version of the panel or see release notes on the latest panel. So if we click that, I can see is 10.6.3 the latest version, and then I can quickly update if there is a newer version. Now click this next video to learn more great ways to use Lumenzia.